Uh, good afternoon, uh, of course, uh, to the British School of Manila and to TEDx. Thank you for having me. Uh, this is my second time to do a TED Talk, and it's always an honor uh, to be on the TED stage. Uh, very grateful. I guess it kind of just also proves to myself that maybe I'm doing something right. I'm not that crazy, right? Because I guess what I really want to talk to you about this afternoon and just share a little bit of my experiences uh, in the film industry or in the business of storytelling, if that's okay. Uh, you know, I'm still also very learning, I'm still evolving, I'm still transforming. But I'd just like to share with you, uh, I guess, a little bit of uh, what I do and my experiences. Um, let's see, it's working. Is the slide thing working? I did have some slides. There we go. Um, so basically, I kind of wanted to just focus, of course, I know transformations is the topic of uh, this afternoon. But I also wanted to focus on something called imagination or imaginations, because that's kind of what I do for a living. It's, uh, I know Steven Spielberg said that he dreams for a living. So if someone like Steven Spielberg can say that, you know, uh, and be successful at it, you know, why not myself or why not you guys? Um, Albert Einstein also said something that, uh, like this, that imagination is more important than knowledge. Uh, I'm not saying that knowledge is not important, but it just shows you and it just proves to you how important uh, imagination is. Uh, I hope that's something you could agree with me this afternoon. Actually, a little, little anecdote or little story. I was, uh, about a month ago, I was with my, uh, with my family, my little boy. We finally brought him to Disneyland. You know, that's kind of like the happiest place on earth for kids, right? And I was going through Disneyland. I was kind of just, first of all, when, when you step into Disneyland, it's kind of like an experience. And of course, I thought to myself, all of this, came from the mind and the imagination of, uh, of Walt Disney. I mean, how powerful was that? That this man who had a vision years and years, decades and decades ago, and now he's sharing it with millions and possibly billions all over the world. And then I read, a, so when, when I was in Disneyland, what I like to do is kind of read, read about, about the origins of it. And um, long story short, um, I think they opened a new Disneyland in, in Florida. Right? And I think the granddaughter or the grandson of Walt Disney uh, and the whole Disney family, they, uh, they went there to the opening. Of course, uh, Walt Disney uh, was not around anymore. He had passed. And I think the, one of the grandkids told uh, uh, the parent, the son of Walt Disney, he's like, I, wouldn't you wish uh, grand Grandpa was here to see all this? And then the son replied, but he already did. So what I like to stress is that imagination is really powerful. It's something that you've got to see and then make it happen. And that's where the challenge lies, I really believe. 1017P is a company I uh, established in uh, 2009. And for those of you that don't know, but my birthday is also on October 17th, so for a lack of a better name, I just named my company after my birthday, October 17th. And I also call it the day my imagination was born. Um, that's kind of how I like to look at it. Um, I guess ever since uh, my first second on Earth up to today, I believe that imagination has already been planted in each and every one of you, and that's something you can use to further what it is you want to do in life. And that's what I did. So the challenge really is to transform that imagination into a reality, because it's not that easy. Um, you have this idea, and the next step is to share it with all of you. And how do you do that? It's a process. And in my business, it's film. Every film that I've done, every film that I've produced, every film that I've directed started with an imagination, whether it was my imagination or the imagination of the director, writers that I've been uh, working with or collaborating with. I always say a great film, a great project, and I guess this can be uh, uh, attributed to business in general or into life, is that you need to learn how to collaborate. It's all about collaborations. We were just speaking about that earlier. And a great film is just basically great collaborators coming together to tell a story. And that's where the challenge comes in, is because um, you need to work together. And it's not easy. Everybody's got their own attitudes. Everybody's got their own egos. Um, these are eight films that I've produced and directed. I all say that these were uh, all imaginations to begin with. And the challenge was to make them. Uh, the challenge was to make them. Um, let me just briefly go through some of the films. Um, Transit, I guess one of my more successful films, was, was uh, birthed from the imagination of, of, of the director, Hannah Espia, who had this vision of shooting a film in Israel and to tell a story about uh, the OFWs who were living there. 
and the, and the troubles and the struggles they went through. Transit was just one big challenge. I mean, it's, I guess that's the easy part, you know? And I encourage you, that's the easy part is to imagine, right? But to share that imagination with the world, I guess that's where the challenge comes in. And if you're able to do that, I guess that's when you can be very successful. And that's why I always say this, you know, films, it can be very subjective, good or bad, you can like it, you can hate it, but you gotta be proud of it, because no matter what, you did it, you made a film. And we've been fortunate enough to make eight films. Uh, Transit, uh, Kid Kulafu was about uh, the origins of Manny Pacquiao, one of the uh, world's greatest boxers, and so forth. Uh, I'll speak more about these uh, later on as well. But yeah, subjects of my imagination. I also had um, um, my last film, which they talked about in the introduction, was Shargao. That was my latest imagination, right? I collaborated with, with people, and together we made this happen. And um, we were very successful last December. Uh, one of the, our mo more successful projects for my company. And so we were really, really happy with the outcome of Sharga. But then again, let me just stress that these were all the products of just imagination, collaboration, and so forth. Um, so I guess also, you know, of, of course, so here I am imagining, uh, you know, trying to think uh, forward. I've got hundreds of stories I want to tell. Actually, I kind of encourage people also, um, if you look at my computer, if you look at my phone, or if you have a notebook, I have something like, I call it like an imaginations folder. Because imaginations can actually happen uh, anytime, anywhere. Maybe even right now, maybe in the car, or while you're taking a shower. And so I, I make it a point to kind of write down anything that kind of just pops into my head. So that, you know, maybe later on I can actually execute it. But I had to learn, of course. I had to learn how to turn my imaginations into reality and, 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 and make it into a business. I share this photo with you here is because um, I guess that's the power of imagination for me. You're, you're able, imagine this, every one of you sitting here this afternoon has imagination. Whether you believe it or not, it is there. It is there. And you've got to find ways to use it. You've got to find ways to exercise it so that you can execute it. Um, working with Manny Pacquiao was an imagination. And I worked hard and I worked hard to make it happen. We did a film called Kid Kulafu. It was just one big challenge after another, but it was an imagination that I really wanted to bring to life. And at the end of the day, I was also very passionate about it, so I never let go. That was about a project that was three years in the making. The lower right-hand corner here was a photo with Dean Devlin, who, uh, if you're not familiar, he recently just directed a film called Geostorm. He owns Electric Entertainment. He's the writer behind the Independence Day Godzilla series. He actually acquired Transit uh, for North America, and he actually kind of saved my life because I kind of gave everything I got financially, physically, emotionally, spiritually to transit, and it took me a year. I was shopping it around, I was going to film markets, and no one was picking it up until my final meeting, my final pitch was to, to Dean's group, and he picked it up. So I guess my learning there is never stop, you know, never stop, just keep going. It could be that last meeting that gets you to the next level. So I'm very thankful to Dean, and up to this day, we have a very good friendship, and he, he does help me. And of course, here on the left, if you're not familiar with Miss Meryl Streep, um, we produced a film for a, a critically acclaimed director called Lav Diaz, who had this crazy imagination of telling a film about the Philippine Revolution. It got even crazier when he wanted it to be eight hours. It got even crazier when Meryl Streep actually loved the film. It got even crazier when she actually took us out to dinner in Berlin after the film festival. It got even crazier when she was asking us questions, when we were all like, we should be asking you questions, you know? She was really interested. And if there was one thing I got out of that dinner and kind of validated what I was doing, was she asked, you know, who, who, who's the crazy producer behind this eight hour film? So of course, it was myself and I, I of course, I had did co-produce. And she said, you know what? You gotta be a little bit crazy to be in this industry. And I guess if Meryl Streep says it's okay to be crazy, then it's okay to be crazy. So. That was a wonderful experience. And then again, I always attribute it to imagination. With, with these films, literally, I was probably in, in a car or in my, I know when, when I was producing the film for Love, uh, uh, I got a phone call, I think I was home, I just woke up and that they wanted to meet. And once he told me the story, the imagination kind of birthed. And it was like, you know, so, so from the bedroom to dinner with Meryl Streep, you know. Transit was pitched to me in CCP. So I always say from the cultural center of the Philippines, 
to Hollywood. You know, that's kind of how the power of imagination can take you. And with the Pacquiao story, it was just kind of like meeting him and working with him on commercial sets to finally uh, getting the permission to tell his story on film, and that was Kid Kulafu. So the power of imagination is powerful, but I also want to encourage you guys that you cannot just stay in your room. You cannot just stay in the coffee shop. Once you get that spark of imagination, you got to take action. You got to take that step forward. You got to take that leap of faith. And you've got to learn how to experience. You got to learn how to develop. And I always tell this to people, good old hard work. You got to get dirty. You got to get dirty. I mean, you cannot sit in your room all day and dream and imagine, but that's a good thing. But don't just stay there. Get out of that room and make your phone ring. You know, make your phone ring. Get that phone call from that producer that wants to believe in you. Get that phone call from those investors. Uh, I always say experience because for me, that is one of life's best teachers is experience, is getting your feet wet, getting dirty. I, I started out 2005 doing advertising work. One of, my, one of my first gigs were actually Xerox copying storyboards, you know, doing coffee runs. I actually got this internship with a Hollywood director called Paul Haggis in 2004. I thought it was the big break. But actually, my duties were to, to, to drop off his dry clean, you know, pick up his kids from school. I never, I thought I was going to be on the film set, right? I, the only, the closest thing I got to a film set was probably uh, FedExing some scripts or something like that. But I never saw any production. But it was those experiences uh, as I was growing up that exercised my imagination, fueled my passion to kind of do what I'm doing today. And of course, I always say hard work. Uh, the reason why I say hard work is because in today's kind of world, uh, a lot can be done on a chair and a laptop, right? But that's great, that's good, but you gotta go and get it. You gotta make it happen. If you wanna tell that story, make it happen. If they're not calling you up, make them call you up. Find a way to do that. And that's kind of you know, what I still wanna, the discipline that I kind of instill in myself up to this day. I'm big on this. I'm big about, I'm big on failures because that's all I know how to do. I think if failure was a business, I'd be a billionaire today because in those nine films that I've produced or directed, those are products of failure, bad decisions, bad calls. But the great thing about it was that I got to learn from it. You know, the failures were never big enough to crush me and to put me down. Although there were times I just wanted to quit. You know, uh, uh, we, we don't have enough money to finish the film. So-and-so wants to back out. But we just persevered, and I just learned to handle your failures. And this is something that you've just got to accept is that you're going to be failing and failing, but also be able to learn from it so that you don't repeat the same mistakes, you don't fail with the same kind of failures. And I always say this, if you're able to handle your failure, you'll be able to handle your success. And I think that's what keeps me grounded today, is that I know where I came from. You know, I know how hard it was. I was talking to some producers actually over dinner the other night, and... Um, I was, I was telling them, and we were having a lot of challenges. My, the next film I'm doing is just challenge after challenge. And I, I, I told them, I go, this is, the, this is the 200 pesos the Filipino audiences pay for. <laughs> you know? Yes, they're going to be watching a film, an entertainment film, but they don't know the hundreds of meetings, the hundreds of discussions and debates that go on into putting an imagination on the big screen. But I'm just so passionate about it that I just got to make it happen. So if you learn to handle your failures, You'll be able to handle your success. And I want everybody to be successful in whatever it is that you do. If you're passionate about it, I really believe you can do it. So just to kind of wrap up uh, my little talk here is that uh, I like that word transformation because we should constantly be transforming. The world around us is changing every day, minute. Right now when we enter this room, and I'm sure later when we go home, something has changed, something has transformed. So learn how to adapt, continue to evolve, and for me, one of the most important things is to never stop learning, is that I don't think I will ever know it all. And I want to work with people that want to keep learning, that want to know and are hungry to find ways to, to create the next best idea, the, the next best imagination. Today in the film industry, it's all about streaming. It's all about watching movies on your phone. So how do we adapt to that? There was a big disruption. It's not a, just about the cinema anymore, the cinema anymore. It's about different, it's about content. And as a filmmaker, as a director, when I started out in 2004 up to today, 2018, I think today there's probably thousands and thousands of directors and creators. So the challenging and the demand is huge. So how do you stay different? How do you stay relevant? And I really believe 
the way to stay relevant, and the unique thing that nobody else, nobody else around this whole world has, what will set you apart from the billions of people around this world is your imagination, because that is your own. And if you can think great thoughts, if you can be positive, if you can see things before it happens, and if you can imagine, and then you can share that imagination with others, and then you can collaborate with the right people, I really believe you can change the world. You can just change the way how people think. So continue to transform, guys, and imagination, imagine, and imagine. I guess my time is up. <laughs> but I hope, I, hope, I hope you learned a little something there. And um, from my experiences, I'm still very young, I'm still learning. But uh, TED Talks and British School Manila, thank you very much for your time. Uh, I appreciate uh, this afternoon session. Thank you, guys.